Hi, I'm Zoe Francois from Zoe Bakes, and today I am answering your questions. I have a Substack, which I will link to below. I have a free and I have a paid version. In the paid version, you can ask me questions and I will come here and answer them. So that's what I'm doing today. I got lots of questions, um, so thank you very much. And um, I'm very excited about this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. The first one is from Kathy. And Kathy writes, we've been making your five minute bread, but do you ever use a starter? And if so, what are some tips? Okay, so. Some of you are probably coming here um, from following me on Instagram. Um, my Zoe Bakes Instagram account is mostly pastry. I do very little bread there. Um, and so you may not know that I have written eight books on bread with my co-author, Jeff Hertzberg. Um, they are, a, it's a series called Artisan Bread in Five Minutes a Day. Uh, we have, the original one um, is here from 2007. This is probably the workhorse version of it. So if you are interested in starting the craft of bread, this is what you should get. Uh, we also have a gluten-free version um, and lots of other things, healthy bread, um, holiday breads, pizza and flatbreads, um, basically every bed you can possibly imagine. And it's a really quick, easy way. And I will do a video and show you the technique because if you haven't seen it, it may change your baking world. Okay, having said that, do I use a starter? Yes, all the time. Mm, daily, no, but mm, at least once a week, I make a sourdough loaf. And my technique is, a, is like a cross between a traditional sourdough and my five minute bread recipe. So I will do a video on that as well because um, I don't know why I haven't shared it yet, but I haven't. It's just something I do at home. Here is my starter. Um, it's not looking very active because I just, just fed it like 10 minutes ago. And so it hasn't um, done its thing. I've had this starter going for years, maybe even a decade. Um, what are the tips? I'm not sure um, if Kathy has a starter that's already established. Um, or is asking about starting a starter. So if you are just starting your first sourdough starter, the two things that are key are to use organic flour and filtered water. You don't wanna have any chemicals anywhere near your starter. Otherwise, it's not going to grab. It's not going to attract those natural bacteria that come into it the yeast that comes into your starter and produces um, the mother. So organic flour, filtered water, it may take up to two weeks to get a really healthy starter going, but it's just flour and water and letting it do its thing. Um, a little bit of warmth, not too much heat. Uh, in the room is great and just uh, feed it. I will link to a um, starter. And like I said, I will do a video um, of my process because it's a little bit different. There's so many different ways to go about this and I'm gonna share mine. Okay, so that's that. Um, I think I'll, I'll leave it there because I'm not exactly sure which part of the process Kathy was asking about, so maybe she'll clarify. Okay, Lisa, so many questions, awesome. Um, I'd love tips on making pastry cream. Yay! Um, are there any tricks of the trade? Thanks so much, Zoe, best. Okay, so pastry cream. I love pastry cream. It is essentially the workhorse of any pastry department in a restaurant. Um, and it is the foundation of cakes 
and desserts and trifle and all kinds of different things. You can put it in um, puff pastry. You can um, layer it up with berries. It can go into a tart. I mean, it is used everywhere. Okay, some tips on making pastry cream. I would say the number one mistake that people make when they're um, cooking a pastry cream is how long they cook it and whisk it. When I was working in restaurants, um, I would make a recipe. I think my typical recipe uses like four or five eggs. Um, I would do a batch in the restaurant that had like a hundred eggs and it was in a giant Rondo pot and you have to whisk it the whole time so that it doesn't cook along the edges and um, get lumpy. And so you absolutely have to cook the pastry cream, bring it to a boil and let that cook for three minutes in order to cook out the starch. A pastry cream has cornstarch and that's what thickens it. And if you don't bring it to a boil and whisk, whisk, whisk it for three minutes, your pastry cream can separate and weep. That's when the liquid separates out of the custard or pudding. Um, and you get this uh, liquid that settles at the bottom. So if that's happening, or if it feels grainy, it's because you didn't whisk it long enough. So set a timer, whisk it for three minutes. The reason that I brought up the 100 egg version of it is those three minutes felt like three hours. <laughs> It feels like a long time when you're standing over a hot cauldron of the pastry cream. You will be making a tiny batch of it, so it's not going to feel like that much work. But three minutes can, can feel like a long time. So make sure you set a timer and you're getting to the end of that three minutes. That will improve the texture, the longevity of your pastry cream, and then also strain it. Especially if you're new to making it, you may end up with some lumps of um, cooked egg in it. Just strain them out and then you will have a beautifully smooth pastry cream. My YouTube channel's kind of new, so I don't have a video of the pastry cream yet, but it is coming. Every time you ask a question, it will inspire me to make more videos. So please keep these questions coming. Go to my Substack. Please sign up for my extras version and then ask me questions and I will not only answer them, but also make more videos. Okay, so pastry cream. Let's see. Okay, the next one is from Elizabeth. Elizabeth says, I agree, so many questions, awesome. I've been wanting to learn how to perfect macarons. Okay, macarons are those beautiful, delicate French cookies. They're like um, two meringue cookies that are almond and meringue and they puff up um, and then they're sandwiched with usually like ganache or buttercream or whatever you dream up there is some technique to it. These are one of those recipes where I can't say it's super simple, but they're not as difficult as you might imagine. As long as you have the simple techniques that go into it and you do step by step, you'll get there. I have a recipe for the macaron on my website um, I also have another one coming up in my cookie book. There are many, many ways to make a macaron. Um, there are a couple of basic tips that you have to know. I'm gonna share them with you here now. And then, like I said, I'm going to do a video and teach you how to do it. So 
There's two tips. One is the macronage. That is basically a very fancy word for stirring the mixture. You need to know exactly what the mixture should look like before you pipe them into the individual cookies. If your macaron batter is too thick and you don't um, sort of press out some of the air from your uh, meringue, your macaron shells will puff up too much and they won't have that flat top. So that's because you didn't stir it enough. The other thing to keep in mind is before you bake them, you need to let the tops dry. If the tops don't dry enough before you bake them, again, they'll puff up too much and you won't get that beautiful flat top and that puffed up foot. So those are the two most important tips that I can share here with you without actually showing you how to do it. So I will create a video and show you how to do it. I have tips, uh, more tips and techniques on my website, I'll link below. And like I said, I have even more coming in my cookie book. So great question. I love macarons, just love them. And it's an adventure. So keep that in mind when you're making them. Uh, the next question is from Shelly. I have a recipe for butter cake. Can I add lemon curd to the center for more pizzazz? Well, Shelly, I just happen to have that very recipe in my Zoe Bakes Cakes book. Um, it is a lemon pound cake with lemon curd and baked lemons. It's like a lemon explosion. It's bright, it's wonderful. It's rich from the butter and the lemon curd. It, I love it. So can you add it to your butter recipe, butter cake recipe? Yes, you can. Is it an experiment? Yes, it is. Whenever you play with a recipe, if you add something to the batter, it may change it. It will change the baking time. It will change the consistency. It depends a little bit about your butter cake recipe. Is it a delicate recipe that if you add the lemon curd, it's gonna make it fall? Or is it a sturdy one where if you fold in lemon curd, it's gonna be totally fine. I typically say whenever you're playing with a recipe, and I love the concept, I think you all should be playing with your recipes, maybe start out with a half batch because that way, if it doesn't come out exactly the way you want it to, you haven't wasted a bunch of ingredients. You um, have just a little one so that if it isn't to your liking, there isn't a bunch of it to be disappointed in. Um, so if you can make a half batch um, and play with it, or you can use my lemon curd pound cake recipe um, that is tested and true. So I will link to that below. The next question comes from, I believe it's Yoni. Um, what desserts can be made a couple of days early? It's hard to bake on the day of company. No kidding. This is such a great question. There are recipes that are really best the day you make them. Um, and so, you know, things like um, croissants and even some kinds of bread or pastry or Danish really aren't that wonderful the next day. They're passable, but do you want to serve them to company? Things like, um, things like a custard, a creme brulee, a pot of creme, all of those desserts actually get better. Even a flan gets better when it sits in the refrigerator. It actually needs time to cool and set. Cheesecake, brilliant. You need to do those things at least several hours ahead, if not a day ahead. So those kinds of desserts 
are wonderful because the texture is going to be great, the timing is going to be perfect, they hold up, um, and you have no worry. If you want something more delicate, something like a trifle, which is layers of cake that's moistened with a fruit coulis, that's just pureed fruit that's poured over it so it keeps the cake nice and moist. Um, and then maybe the pastry cream that we mentioned before, or some kind of a chocolate sauce or something, but you're layering different textures and um, you're absolutely adding some moisture to it so it won't feel dry. Um, the other thing are like ice cream desserts. That you have to scoop at the last second, but like a baked Alaska. You can make that, form it, freeze it for days, and then at the last second, even put the meringue on the top, and then at the last second, you bring out your blowtorch and light it up. So lots and lots of different ways to go about making something for company that you're not either having to do at the last second or afraid that it's gonna taste stale. Okay, great question. Yoni has one more question and it's about the carrot cake. Um, I will link to my carrot cake below and she wants to know, can I make the carrot cake, freeze it and then ice it later? Yes, 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 I do it all the time. I bake the layers, I freeze them in anticipation of a party or an event or just a Tuesday. I will take them out, let them defrost in the plastic wrap. Whenever you are freezing a cake, you wanna make sure that you are really, really covering it well. Wrap it really well so it doesn't get freezer burn and it doesn't take on the personality of your freezer, especially if you fish and you freeze those fish, you don't want your cake to taste like those fish. So. Take them out, let them defrost in the plastic so the condensation's on the outside, and then go ahead and frost them as you would. Excellent question. Okay, Suzanne, any Passover dessert recipes? I once made your layered pastry cake, took me all day, was yummy. Okay, I'm not sure which <laughs> cake that is. Um, but the thing about Passover desserts is they can't have flour. So there's lots of um, rules around a Passover cake. I have lots of recipes on my website. I am going to link to a whole list of desserts that qualify for delicious Passover desserts. Um, lots of things like um, coconut macaroons, um, coconut cakes, things that use um, matzo meal instead of flour. So there are lots of um, different options for you. If you are going to do a layer cake, um, like the one that you tried before, it kind of relates to the last question. You can bake the layers of the cake and freeze them, make the different components, and then assemble them. You don't have to make a cake start to finish all in the same day, because that really can sort of take over a whole day, especially if it's the first time you're making the recipe and you're a little bit unsure and it's going a little bit slowly. So, Use your freezer. I love my freezer. I will make buttercream and freeze it. I'll make cake layers and freeze them. I'll make ganache and freeze them. And then I can take them all out and assemble the cake. And I'm not waiting for the different parts to um, finish up. I have them all ready to go and assembly goes much faster. So two things, use your freezer and I will list to some uh, Passover desserts below. Okay, the last question I have here is, <laughs> this is hilarious. I'm one of those dreaded vegans. Do you have any conversion tips to replace eggs and dairy in baking? Some of your recipes I've converted successfully, but others haven't worked. Thanks. 
Um, okay, uh, I. I would love to know which ones didn't work because then um, I can help uh, work that out. First of all, egg replacer. There are a couple of different ways to replace eggs. There is um, pre-packaged powdered egg replacer. Um, I think Bob's Red Mill has one. There's one called Energy, which is the one I grew up using. Um, I've used that product since I was a kid that's been around. Um, the other way to do it is to make a slurry of ground flaxseed and water. And it really does become viscous and have the same consistency as egg. So there are different ways to replace the egg. Um, and I can list some of those below. Having said that, you also want to choose a recipe that um, is conducive to replacing the eggs. So something like a angel food cake, which is all about the egg whites. It's all about whipping a meringue and having that lofty, beautiful texture because of the meringue. That's gonna be difficult with a replacer. You can't, having said that, you can replace some egg whites with what's called aquafaba. Aquafaba is, and this is gonna sound very odd to those of you who are not vegan, but aquafaba is actually the liquid that is produced from soaking garbanzo beans in water. So after your garbanzo beans have soaked and been tender, uh, um, that liquid, the protein from the garbanzo beans is in that water and you can whip it up and it looks just like a meringue. Um, but like I said, getting a successful angel food cake out of aquafaba is a challenge. So try it, but again, do a small batch so that you're not wasting a lot of ingredients and you don't have a big cake that you may not be entirely happy with. Uh, okay, so dairy. Dairy is a different issue. And depending on what you're making, um, I go from oat milk to soy milk. If I need something a little bit richer and fatter, I go with coconut milk. So it kind of depends on the recipe, um, but those are the ones that I tend to use. Um, and because you had mentioned that some of the attempts that you've had were not successful, I would love to know more about that because then I can help you with those individual recipes. Um, so maybe write back, um, Catherine, maybe write back and tell me a little bit more about the ones that were not successful. So anyway, I hope that helped. Um, the last one is really a comment. It's from Patricia and she says, um, and she says, I'm looking forward to videos linked up with your new cookie book. Awesome, because they're coming. I love that you said that. One of my favorite episodes of your show was making cookies with your sons. Ah. Mine too. I loved having them um, come on the show. I love that they were willing. I love that they um, would always give me their opinions. So they never will stop giving me their opinions. <laughs> um, the uh, videos for the cookie book are coming. I'm going to have in my cookie book a cookie academy, very much like I did with my uh, cake book. This is, this is my cake book and in the cake book is the Cake Academy, these pink pages where I go over all of the tips and techniques that will make you a better cake baker. I'm gonna do the same thing in my cookie book and I will also make videos to go along with them. So thank you so much for all of the questions. This has been 
awesome. I love it. Um, I hope there are more and more and more from all of my extras subscribers. So please subscribe to my extras Substack. Um, there'll be a link below. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel like the video, share it with your friends. Please comment below about more videos you'd like to see, recipes, tips and techniques. Thank you and have a great day.